Fifteen, the motion of a rocket from a platform fifty feet tall is modeled by this equation. Okay, that. Uh, what is the maximum height in feet reached by the rocket? All right, so to do maximum height, what we're looking for is we're looking for this guy right there, right? Maximum height always occurs at the vertex, okay? And the reason is because all motion um, that is uh, has the effects of gravity on it is going to be parabolic in shape. So um, quadratics are the best for that. So this guy is going to get launched from here and we need to find that maximum height. So this is gonna require two things. Now, first of all, we need the formula to figure out the axis of symmetry to this guy. Now the axis of symmetry tells us when the maximum occurs. It doesn't tell us where, it tells us when, okay? And that means x equals when, okay? The y equals where, okay? So, when we solve for x, um, we're gonna get the when, and let's do that. But remember, the, the maximum height does not tell us when is it gonna reach the maximum height. It wants the where, okay? So we have to find the y. So that's gonna be the second step. So anyways, let's go x equals. Now you need this formula, and this, um, actually we derived this formula in, in calculus, so you don't really need to know where it comes from. You know, a lot of formulas in life, you know, you just kind of like accept it. And then hopefully when you get older, you know, you can kind of see like, oh, that's where that formula comes from. Um, but this is one of them. Okay, so we're just going to use it for the time being. Um, we've got a negative B, which is uh, this. This is our A, that's our B, and that's our C. So we're going to get negative 192. Okay, so he switched his, he uh, changed his sign. And then we're going to get 2 times uh, negative 16. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator to figure out when this occurred. Negative 192 divided by negative 32 should better be positive. And it looks like this happens at 6 seconds. So this thing launched and then 6 seconds later it reaches its maximum height. Okay, so that's 6 seconds. So what we do then is now, that's our first phase, our second phase is to figure out how high we were. And so what you do is you find out that the f function, you want to find out when when you plug in a 6 at 6 seconds, uh, how high is he? Because that's what this guy does. It gives us every single moment. It can tell us our velocity. It can tell us our acceleration. It tells us so much if we have this equation. In algebra 2, we just focus on its position. Um, so that's 6. And we're going to square that guy plus 192 times 6 plus 50. All right, now I'm not going to do that in my head for sure. I'm going to go ahead and just, um, you might hear gumball in the background. That's because my boys are obsessed with it. They won't stop. All right, so that's 626 feet. That's how high it got. Then reach its maximum and then starts its descent down. And you'll notice that um, if I plug in a 7, it's going to be lower than 6, 626 because it's going to start its downward descent. Okay, so that is the answer for number 15. Um, number 16, we're going to go ahead and do this. All right, 16 is solve this equation. Actually, let's, let's do it up here. 17, we'll put closer to that. Uh, 16 is solve this guy. Okay. Now, um, this is fine. What I want to do, though, it's a quadratic. Uh, quadratics should be dialed to zero if I want to ever solve them. That's just, it's the best trick in town. You want to set this guy equal to zero so that you can solve it. If you ever have to solve a quadratic, I know I just said that like five times, but make sure that you set this equal to zero. So what we want to do, though, is we want to use the x method whenever possible. That's what we call it in our class. And so we want to, we want to shift this guy around so that this A is positive, and that this guy over here is zero, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these two over here, rearrange them, and then I'll have a zero on this side, okay? So now this guy moves over here, he'll become positive. This guy will move over there, he'll become negative. But since the eight was already there and he's positive, he's gonna look like that, okay? 
Now, if you want to put the z equals zero on this side, because that's what you're used to, it's fine, but it doesn't matter. It's saying the same thing. So now I'm in a position where I can just use the x method because I'm just straight out factoring. But factors of eight add up to negative six. So do you think about it? Okay, yeah, good. It's uh, actually, I don't know. Yeah, they both gotta be negative and they both, uh, yep. So negative four and negative two. Okay, so this means then that negative four and negative two are not my answers, okay? What I've done is I've created x minus 4 and x minus 2 equals 0. So this means then that I want to find a value that will give me 0 for this parenthesis and find the other value that will give me a 0 for this parenthesis. Now that we do this because this can be done just by observation. I need a positive 4 and a positive 2 to produce 0, okay, in both cases. So it's actually not these two, it's these two. Okay. All right. 17. Identify the interval in which the function. Okay. Get this guy. And now he's going to be negative. All right. Now we can do this two different ways here. We can do it by hand to figure out where it's actually below the x-axis, or we can use our graphing calculator. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to um, I'm going to um, do this by hand. Okay. Uh, so this guy where he is negative so this means that this guy is pointing upwards and I want to know because he's pointing upwards that means that he's going to be negative he's going to be negative in between two locations possibly if this is factorable okay and this means that it's this region that is that is going to be negative so all this would be negative I need to figure out where it hits the x axis and where it hits the x axis my dogs are fighting is going to be I'm making videos who's who is that I need to know when it equals zero all right so I need factors of negative 20 that add up to negative 1 and that is negative 5 and positive 4 okay now again those are not my answers what I've got is x minus 5 and x plus 4 in my parentheses so what I need to make zero is x equals 5 and negative 4 Okay, so going back to here, that means that this guy's negative 4 and that's 5. It's somewhere in between there's a 0. Okay, so this means in between those two values, I was negative. So this means that negative 4 and positive 5 is my interval. So now you'll notice that I left the parentheses or the brackets blank for a second. I gotta think. Okay, am I allowed to be 0 at those locations? It just says is negative. Now, if I'm on the x-axis, that means that I am not negative. I'm completely neutral. So in this context, I want to make sure that I do not include um, those specific points. Okay? We got eight minutes. Okay, let's keep going. 18, we want to use square roots to solve this. Cool. So, all right. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. All right, now all this is going to do, first of all, it's going to take out an I, okay? All right, but my guess is that there's probably going to be something, a pair of something that I can take outside of 289. At this point, this is not the correct answer, okay? We want to break this guy down farther. It's just not simplified enough. So what we need is we need 289, and we need to break him down. My guess is that 3 goes into this, so 3 times something three goes in there and nah, nope that's not it 289 it's 289 a perfect square uh, let's see square root square root 289 oh 17 all right that would have taken forever to figure out that out by hand because 17 is a prime number so this means that I got a pair of 17s there so this means that this guy is going to be 17 I and then that's it Okay. Okay, sorry, I've lost some thought there for a second. 
I'll edit that out. <laughs> or not. <laughs> I'll write the product of these two in this form. So I'm going to multiply these two. Okay. I see what I'm thinking. Yeah, see? Okay, so I was right. Um, it just dawned on me. All right, so when you take the square root, though, what should have happened, I should have put a plus or minus there. Okay. When I can take the square root, always got to do a plus or minus. Okay. And that's because you can have a double negative or a double positive produce a positive number. So if you want to be fully correct, you're going to have to put the plus or minus there. Okay. All right. So um, let's go here. We're going to multiply these guys. Where are we at? We got 10 minutes. So you know what? Nope. We're going to stop right there.